This is a CBS 2 News update. I'm Mary Calvi. We're following a developing story on Staten Island. One man is in police custody as officers frantically search for a missing 12 year old who's the subject of an Amber Alert. The Washington County Sheriff's Office has charged 19 year old George Torres of Staten Island with endangering the welfare of a child. Officials say Malaya Johnson was abducted upstate around 3 p.m. Wednesday in Hudson Falls near Lake George. The Amber Alert was activated yesterday. Police had been searching for a red two door. Ford Mustang and found it on Staten Island on Bay Street near the ferry terminal. There is no sign of Johnson. Police say she was last seen near the Staten Island ferry. The NYPD has been broadcasting her description all night. Authority to one to Lieutenant Level 1 Mobilization has been activated in regards to a missing 12 year old. Mobilization point is going to be the Staten Island ferry terminal. We're looking for a female. Her name is Michaela Johnson. She's 115 pounds, last thing wearing a red jeans, white tin top. Placing Johnson could still be in the New York City area. They ask you to call them immediately if you have any tips about where she may be. The rain has passed, but will it return for the weekend? Let's turn things over to John Elliott. I got to tell you, Mary, if anybody deserves a nice weekend, it's us. Oh, so many issues with flooding all week and then another round last night. 11 o'clock, 56, clouds overhead, numbers cool raw 60 the hot spot in the hamptons and they're still dealing with more rain there but i mean without exception it's 5 10 12 degrees cooler than it was yesterday so a big dip in the numbers now let's talk about the rain worst of it is out of here problem is damage has been done we're still dealing with flooding for the weekend high pressure builds in it's going to be great and we deserve it still a flash flood warning in effect for the next bit for jersey i mean part of this is a long rivers where, yeah, they've just got no place for the water to go. There's been so much rain. And in fact, just the numbers, and these are some new numbers, just from the event last night and this morning, Bay Ridge, 2.66 inches. I'm telling you, there's still a lot of street flooding out there in poor drainage areas. Sheep's Head Bay over two inches, Dick's Hill over two inches, Merrick's right at 1.82. Future cast, though, We'll see some clouds linger, maybe a little sprinkle activity, but then high pressure builds in. I think you'll like the numbers, too. It warms up to the nice low 70s. Enjoy. Mary? John, thank you so much. Dramatic surveillance video shows a man being shot in the Bronx while walking with his three-year-old daughter in the middle of the afternoon. You can see three gunmen approaching the victim on University Avenue in the Bronx, September 17th. One of the suspects opens fire but misses. At that point, all three attackers pull the victim away from the girl and shoot him in the leg. The 30-year-old victim was taken to St. Barnabas Hospital in stable condition. His daughter was not injured in the attack. A wild scene caught on video. A store employees in the Bronx blocked two suspected shoplifters from leaving the store. CBS News' Jenna DeAngelis has more from the Belmont section. The wild fight between the suspects and store employees caught on camera. This happened at the Family Dollar on Clinton Avenue Wednesday night just before 9. These are the two suspects police are looking for. Police say they filled bags with store items, including boxers and air fresheners. You can see the first suspect tried to get away. That's when a store employee in the red shirt approaches him. Meantime, the other worker tries to grab the bags. Then, watch this. While the suspect and an employee are wrestling, in the store doorway, the second suspect tries to exit. Despite the effort by the employee to keep him from getting away, the man pushes through the door. Both suspects eventually able to fight their way free. Workers at our area's three major airports are getting raised. The Port Authority approved an increase Thursday, affecting employees of private firms that handle jobs like baggage handling and aircraft cleaning at Newark, JFK, and LaGuardia. The minimum wage will rise in stages up to $19 an hour in 2023. Supporters say the current wage of $10 to $11 an hour has contributed to high job turnover, affecting performance and security. A rush to find a new sheriff in Bergen County is throwing the upcoming county election into chaos. Former Sheriff Michael Sodino resigned last week after a recording surfaced of him making racist remarks. CBS News' Meg Baker has more on what voters should know. Right now, it's just roll up our sleeves, go to work, and deliver the election. The Bergen County Clerk's Office is in a scramble. As word came down from the Secretary of the State, an election must be held to fill the role of sheriff. The applications for nominees, blank. So it's all hands on deck in your office? Yes, it is. Yes. So they're going to have to scramble 
before next Thursday to select their candidates. It was first thought that Governor Murphy would appoint a new sheriff. This is now completely in the hands of Bergen County. According to the experts who looked at this, this was unambiguous. It triggers an election. Between now and that election, uh, do we have the right team in place? The answer is yes, the team in place uh, is, is fully capable. The deadline to name a party nominee for the three-year term is October 4th. Political expert Jim McQueeny says the Democrats will hold a convention on Tuesday to discuss options. Republicans still need a plan. So talk about the compression of events between today and Tuesday. Tuesday, everybody has to campaign to get on the ballot as well, both Democrats and Republicans. Republicans will be a little later. Uh, so this compression of events is really uh, astounding. The sheriff's race will be added on to the general election. The problem, mail-in ballots were already sent out. A couple of thousand, probably between two and three thousand have already cast their ballots, okay? That then means that all of those individuals are now going to get a whole new ballot, mm -hmm. not an addendum. This also comes with a price tag. Hogan estimates $100,000. It's a cost that we're hoping that the state steps up. I asked Governor Murphy if the state will open its wallet. Um, I haven't been asked yet on the, on the ladder, so I'll wait till we're asked. The election is November 6th, leaving voters only a month to get to know the candidates. In Bergen County, New Jersey, Meg Baker, CBS 2 News. The FDNY has made history with its first ever all-female staffed engine company. They posted these pictures on Facebook of the company assigned to Engine 503 on 51st Street in Manhattan. The FDNY says this is a special uniform to help provide protection during the U.N. General Assembly this past week. Being on social media is an issue many parents grapple with, especially as younger children are logging on. One school district in New Jersey is now asking parents to sign a pledge to keep their kids off until they turn 13. CBS News' Andrea Grimes has a story from Manalapan. From Instagram to Snapchat to Facebook, these days it seems everyone's on social media. For parents of young school age children eager to join in, it often leads to a big dilemma. It's a fine balancing act as to do you let your kid or do you not let your child. Now the Manalapan English Town Regional School District in New Jersey is trying to make it easier for parents. They're asking third grade moms and dads to sign this take it slow, let them grow pledge, vowing to keep their son or daughter free from social media until they're at least 13 years old. They're clearly not ready emotionally, developmentally to deal with the type of interactions that they're going to run into. Superintendent John Marchante says they're introducing the pledge at back to school nights for the first time this year, targeting children before they get interested in social media. The superintendent tells me this stems from an incident back in March when Clark Mills Elementary had to be put on lockdown because students were threatened in an app chat room. That, he says, was the last straw. Marchante points to predatory behavior, possible exposure to pornography, and especially cyberbullying as reasons they're trying to cut out social media for young kids. Fourth grader Angelica Pagan says bullying is one reason she steers clear. Some people can like be rude to you and like disrespect you. Another reason is her dad doesn't let her on. He and others support the pledge. A lot of these parents will probably sign off on it and they probably won't probably keep their promise, but it's a good idea. That's definitely a, a good idea. There's a lot of harm that can be done these days with social media. The superintendent hopes to get 100% of parents on board at all five of their elementary schools, which he says will also make it easier for parents to say no to their child. In Manalapan, New Jersey, Andrea Grimes, CBS 2 News. If you're not on social media, you may have missed the uproar over pickle pizza. Rhino's Pizza in upstate New York posted photos of its pickle pizza on Facebook, and many are now expressing their anger and disgust on social media. The pizza is made with garlic sauce instead of marinara, a layer of mozzarella, and topped with dill pickle slices. It's been a success for Rhino's. They sell about 30 pies a day. Chef Gordon Ramsay spoke for many when he responded with a simple no on Facebook. And you can check out our Facebook page at CBS New York and vote in our poll. Oh, would you try pickle pizza? And that's your CBS 2 News update. I'm Mary Calvi. Have a great weekend.